Hi, welcome to my build of this 45 inch wingspan new era 3 revisited. This is the second in a series of videos where we're looking at the construction of this plane right from the initial plans through to the, the, the finished plane itself. In this video I'm going to be looking at preparing some of the components that we need to do so we can start building it. And I'm going to be what we need to think about is how we're going to transfer these shapes onto our balsa wood to prepare the components. And to do that I'm going to be using three different techniques. And I'll just run through that now and show you how I'm going to do it. We can kind of divide the items that we need to produce into three categories. We've got things like the rudder and the fin here, which are essentially curved. They've got straight lines but they've also got some nice curves that we want to retain. So we're going to be using one method to produce those where we're actually going to stick the paper onto, cut the paper out and stick it onto balsa wood and I'll show you that in a minute. Now the second method that we want to use is for items that essentially have a straight edge like the fuselage here and also we've got the ailerons you can see the ailerons is essentially made up of straight lines. They do taper, but they taper with a change in direction and a straight line there. And again, the same with the tailplane and the elevators. These are just straight edged, with the exception of these items here where we've got a little bit of a curve to, uh, to provide some, some strength to that. These, these kind of anti-war tips, if you like. And the third method that we're going to use is where we want to produce items in bulk. So, such as the, the ribs. All the ribs are identical with the exception of uh, small amounts that are cut out here for things like the, um, the, the mounting blocks for the landing gear. So, but essentially we need to produce, let me look at the plans, 12... Uh, six, 17 ribs that are identical so we're going to be using a method for that so that's our three methods now the first one that we're going to we're going to do I'll just run through is I'm going to be making some ailerons make the two ailerons so first thing we need to do here is just trim this up a little bit so I've already cut this out and I've cut a nice straight line here which is the uh, do you call it the leading edge of the aileron uh, the front of the aileron anyway and this is the trailing edge so I'm just going to clean this end up here the scalpel okay now we're going to place our paper pattern on to the balsa and we're just going to stick this in place with a little bit of um, tape. First thing we need to do, actually, let me just check with a steel rule that this is square. I've had balls from before that isn't, and so, well, not square, but is is straight. Yeah, that's that's straight. That's a better side. That side had a very slight. Bit of movement in it so we're going to get this pattern and we're going to essentially just stick this on to the balsa just so it doesn't move with a bit of tape there we go right and i'm using the straight edge here for the front edge of the aileron and the edge here. Now we've got that on there and I'm just going to get some t a T-pin and where we have a corner or a change of direction I'm going to put the T-pin in and just mark that with a hole. Again the same here. Now I'm working to the outside of the line here Oops, just do that a little bit in from the end. Right, I've now got three holes where the changes of direction is, and actually I should do one there as well. Just set in a little bit from the edge. 
Right, now when I remove this, oh, oops, these holes are clearly visible. Just rip that a little bit because I'm trying to rush. Uh, so now if we get a pencil and we can Mark that out. From so it's just joining the dots, dot to dot, essentially. This is quarter inch balsa I'm using. And there we go. There we have our first aileron. I don't know whether the, it's quite bright, I don't know where that can show up, I think it can. So there you can see, look, we've got our aileron marked out, which I can now cut out, and then I can use the one that I've cut out as a pattern to produce the second one. So we have two identical ailerons, and I'll cut that out now. Right, well now onto the, the method I'm gonna use for transferring the image of items with curves onto the balsa wood ready to be cut out. In the past I've just glued them on with various different glues and cut them out, prepared them and then taken the paper off. Sometimes the paper would come off easy, sometimes it would be really difficult and it wasn't an ideal method. Well somebody suggested a method on my YouTube channel on, on one of my last builds which I thought was a brilliant idea, a guy called Tom and I'm going to do that now and, and show you, I hope he, doesn't, uh, hope he doesn't mind, but what he suggested which to me seems uh, ideal, is to use this blue uh, decorator's tape. It's an M3 product and you put the tape onto the balsa like this. I have tried this and it worked really well so I thought it was a good idea and, uh, and good to share with, the, with you guys. Like I say, a guy, a guy called Tom left me a comment on one of my YouTube videos and uh, it's proved really useful. So I'm really, really grateful to his input because I don't know the best way of doing anything. I learn every time I, uh, I build something. And so it's really good to have other people provide me with some help and advice. So, just what we're doing here is we're sticking on a layer. As I said, this is, um, it's scotch. It's just seen there, it's scotch blue uh, decorating tape. It's really thin, it's quite nice stuff. So we've put that on the balsa. We're now going to stick, I'll turn you up a little bit more of that. We're now going to stick the plan onto the tape. We will cut it out and then the tape should just peel off. So I'm using PVA, wood glue and in the past I've used water-based kind of gun glues for, for this kind of stuff and I've always found it, it, it softened the paper and it would stretch and rip Oops. but I find using a, a PVA glue it, it doesn't do that I find PVA really good for sticking uh, sticking plans on obviously it's quite permanent they're not going to come off easily and hence the uh, the masking tape the blue masking tape so almost done I'm doing this a little bit quick I'm always conscious of time with these videos and don't want to kind of make them too long so there we go now I'm going to line this up with the bottom edge of the balsa and the very end of the balsa Just give that a quick roll. Slide that a little bit. Right, and there we go. Now, I'm going to leave that to dry, and once that's dried, I'm going to cut it out, file it off, and we'll come back anyway, uh, sand it off, sorry, and we'll come back uh, during that process 
and we'll have a look. But the thing to do now is to just let that, um, that dry. But I'm not just going to leave it like that. I've got my building weight here and I'm going to weight this because the last thing I want is for this to suddenly start uh, warping with the, the moisture that's gone into the timber. So I'm just going to keep that nicely weighted and hopefully that will dry nice and flat. Well this is nice and dry now, it's been drying overnight and I've just cut out the rough shape with a scalpel uh, and a ruler just doing straight lines and all I need to do now is to go around and just use the scalpel just to take off pieces just to get that rough shape around the, uh, the curves. And once I've done that, I can then use my sanding stick just to put on the, uh, on the curve that's needed. So just carefully take those off and then we can just go around with this and, uh, and get that lovely final shape. And there we have our curved item, or at least we will have once I've uh, sanded it. The balsa that we used, we can now take off the tape just carefully and it's all ready to uh, to use the rest of it so it hasn't it hasn't damaged the balsa we've we've actually got very little wastage using this method because essentially we've just got the the, the bit that we've cut out so I mean I guess I could leave the tape on until next time and just extend the tape but I'd rather take it off so there we go that's how we create our uh, our components with the curves on them. The third technique I'm going to be using is ideal for producing multiple copies of the same item and I'm going to use it for the wing ribs of which I need 17 identical wing ribs but of different thicknesses. So what I've done is I've cut out a template for the wing rib and I've glued that to a piece of 3mm ply. I'm going to cut that out with a fret saw almost to size but slightly over and I'm not going to sand it to finish I'm going to take that finished rib and I'm going to draw around it create a second and then I will bolt the two ribs together and then I will sand this to the finished size so I'll have two perfect 3mm plywood ribs that I can use to make a sandwich of balsa to create all the identical ribs. I will have my 3mm ply, my 3mm ply, I'll have a bolt through the lot and I'll have balsa templates of the right thickness and I will sand them, shape them all together. We'll have a look at the process as it goes on. Um, if you want to see a, a video of the just in detail of how I make ribs like this and the sandwich method of doing them then have a look below in, in the video description and you'll find a link to a, a video on my YouTube channel. But I will get out on and, and cut these out now and we'll come back and, and just have a look at the process as, as it goes on. I've now created my two plywood templates and I've bolted those together with a load of blanks, blank ribs uh, of the correct size balsa and the correct number in between those two templates. And you can see that the, the balsa is just very slightly too big. So what I now need to do is sand these down and bring them down to the same size as these plywood templates. The templates are very fractionally oversized still so it's a little bit of room just for final finishing. So once I've got these down to the, the same size as the template I can just bring the whole lot down exactly where it needs to be. So I'll get on and sand those now and we'll have a look when we've finished. I've now got these blanks all lovely and sanded so they're exactly the same profile as these templates that we had bolted on the end. This is this probably took me five, ten minutes, well maybe ten minutes and it's a lovely rewarding process to get them all lovely and smooth and to the same size. The next thing we need to do before we unbolt them is to cut in the slots for the spars. 
Now I'm using some quarter inch hard balsa and I'm, what I'm going to do is just cut vert the vertical cuts with my uh, razor saw. This is a, a 42 uh, TPI razor saw and I'm just going to put it on the bench once, once they're marked out and put a, a cut across either side of that uh, either side of that spar I'll then take them apart and the last bit of balsa I'll just cut out with a, a scalpel individually as uh, yeah so the way to mark these up as well is that we can see where the the spar goes here but we can't on this side because we don't have a paper template stuck on there and even if we had I probably wouldn't trust it to be right the best way to do that is with a small set square and just put those square across the ribs and if you if you really want to check you can do it the other side and check it's still square which it is so we just put that across line it up with the slot and then just draw a line across and now we can do our vertical cuts Well, having now done my vertical cuts for the spars, I just need to take the ribs off and uh, and cut out that final little bit of balsa, which I've just done with this one. You can see here, so I just put it down. I just checked the depth that it needed to be, and then just used the scalpel to take out that bit of balsa. And there we've got our finished rib, which just fits nice and snug onto the uh, onto the spar. So I need to get on now and finish off all these ribs. Well I've now got all of the the ribs finished in fact I made one more than I need to just in case and the ribs aren't semi they're, they're semi-symmetrical they're not symmetrical so there's a, an arrow just indicating which way up those go and while doing these I had a little bit of waste from around the sides and I just thought I'd use that and uh, cut some of the cap, cap strips that go on top of the ribs. There's not enough here but I thought as I've got the waste material or thin bits, short bits, I thought I might as well cut that up and, and do that. So I'll make some more later and uh, again I'll probably wait till I've cut something else out and I've got a bit of balsa rather than breaking into a new sheet. Now I've got tailplane, elevators, I've got my anti-warp strips, got the fin, the rudder and the, the tape just uh, just peeled off really nicely as I, as I expected it to so we've got that, got the two fuselage sides all nicely cut out and we've got the ailerons something that I haven't done yet is I've just got a couple of crossformers which I, I'll do just very quickly at some point for the fuselage and I've got the, the wing tips. I've done the, a little bit of the sheeting for the underside of the wing, the, the trailing edge and I needed to do that because the wing when I start to build it up will actually sit on those and slightly support it on that spar. Now the wing construction is going to be the next video so I hope you'll come back and watch that and subscribe so you don't miss it. That'd be really good. So it's really exciting now. This is my favourite part of the build. I really, really enjoy doing all the preparation and getting it all ready. And I guess it's partly because the anticipation of the build. So let's move on to the build now with the next video and get these wings built.